Okay, before I uh, move on to some other things I wanted to talk about regarding these motor dynos and what we can learn from them, I thought it was, uh, would be worthwhile exploring a little bit more on uh, boost timing. So, what I uh, just want to do a quick review here from uh, what we had in the last episode. Uh, last episode, we only looked at uh, adding uh, boost, or boost, or boost in the mid RPM range. So, uh, from 2000 to uh, 12,000 RPM was the range that uh, looked promising because of the way the uh, um, uh, blinky or just can timing uh, torque curves looked. And it gave us a pretty significant increase of power. Um, so increasing your boost timing is going to give you more power, more torque, more current draw, and also something that you may not be aware of, a slower spin-up time. So you can see that in this graph here. So this is the uh, uh, four different uh, boost timing settings. So starting with uh, the bottom one here is 10 degrees, then 20 degrees, uh, 30 degrees, and 40 degrees is the purple line. So you can see here to get to the peak RPM, it takes a significantly longer period of time. So the lower boost, you get there very quickly, so your card accelerate fast, get to the top speed, and um, um, just maintain that. Uh, when you have long straightaways, then, you know, something with uh, more boost is going to give you a significant benefit because it'll just continue to accelerate, uh, albeit at a slow rate. So that's all I wanted to uh, mention to you here. Um, what I want to look at in this uh, episode is uh, uh, I didn't really go down to as low uh, a uh, can timing setting uh, as the motor I was using as the test subject would allow. So I want to look at see what see what that does. Then I want to look at uh, what increasing the boost range. I only looked at two two thousand to twelve thousand. So what happens when we do two thousand to fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, twenty five thousand? What does that do to our torque output? And um, uh, lastly, uh, what happens if we start raising the uh, start RPM for, for when we start applying boost? Okay, so this was what we started with last time. Um, this is the uh, torque, this is sorry, power, torque, and current um, uh, curves for the uh, range that we did last time, which was 2K to 12K, and 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees of boost. So I just want to show you here that at this, where this red line is, uh, these values are displayed. So for the 10 degree of timing at that mid-range, uh, upper mid-range um, RPM setting, uh, we're getting 151 watts or 157 watts of power uh, and then when we go up to the higher end of the range 240 so we got about a 50 50 percent plus increase in power <laughs> and similarly we go from 100 to 156 so 50 percent plus increase in torque uh, the the uh, cost of doing that is current drop so you can see here with the uh, 10 degree, we've got 27 amps of current draw and at 40 degrees of boost, we've got 47 amps. So that's a 70% plus increase in, in current draw. So we're paying a penalty, uh, but as long as you can, you can uh, keep it cool um, and gear it properly, uh, there's definitely a way to make this uh, all work. So let's uh, go to RC Crew Chief and we'll have a quick look at uh, uh, some different uh, configurations that I tested. <clears throat> so I've preloaded one here. Uh, just go to the compare graphs. So I've just used the uh, 50 degree blinky version as a, as a reference because uh, I know that this is about as much as I can I can do with Blinky on our track. Now our track is fairly small indoor carpet track, um, so it's uh, uh, you know not representative of all all conditions. Uh, and the other one I'm putting in here for reference is our, our uh, King of the Hill one from last week, which is the 40 degrees of boost 
uh, applied uh, to to 12,000 RPM. So with this motor, I could only turn it down to uh, about 15 degrees, and actually on the motor analyzer, it's more like 16 degrees. So this blue line now is the uh, uh, with the can timing turned down and the boost timing turned up to 45 degrees. Uh, and you can see here that uh, we lost, actually lost a little bit of peak power, but we gained a little bit on the upper end of the RPM range. Um, oops, do that. Set this guy. Um, so, uh, reason there's a difference here is uh, it's not really 15 degrees of boost with this uh, uh, can timing setting. It was probably more like a 17 degrees when I put it on the motor analyzer. So that's why we've gotten a little bit more here. So we've actually got more than 60 degrees of, uh, of timing uh, in the motor. So that's why we're getting a little bit more up here in the upper RPM range. So if we look at our, our torque curves, torque curves very similar. You can see here we lost a little bit in the uh, uh, lower RPM range and gained a little bit in the upper RPM range. Uh, if we look at our current draws, current draws very similar. Uh, not seeing a whole big difference there. So current draw, you're not really paying any sort of a big penalty. A little bit here up at the upper end. Okay, uh, I'm going to load in some other ones, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've loaded some more files in here. Uh, and what I'm looking at this time is, there's our, our big boy, the 2K to 12K, 40 degrees. Uh, then I did a 2K to 15K. This is the range the boost is being applied over. And a 2K to 20K. So let's have a look at the difference here. So there's our reference one with the 40 degrees, 2 to 12K. There is what happens when you apply it over a slightly wider range, 15K. So we're losing some peak power. The upper end is staying exactly the same. And if we apply it from 2 to 20K, you can see we lost uh, quite a bit more uh, peak power. And you know, this funny little carbuncle here, I'm not quite sure what's that, but something, something different going on in the uh, magnetic field. For sure. Um, so this could be helpful um, if you find you've just got uh, too much punch coming out of a corner and you still want to maintain the you know top end speed but you need to take a little bit of that snap out of it then you know increasing your uh, uh, band that you're applying your uh, boost over can give you an, a little bit of help in that department. Okay, one more thing I want to look at, which is uh, what happens when we increase the bottom end of the boost range. So we start applying our boost at uh, higher values, and let's see what happens when we do that. Be right back. Okay, so now what we're going to do is look at what happens when we raise the uh, start RPM for applying boost. So once again, we've got our reference uh, 50 degree blinky version, and we've got our 12 to or 2 to 12k 40 degree version. And now we're going to raise the uh, start RPM. We also have increased the band here as well, and see what happens. So by raising the the uh, lower end of the boost range. Uh, you can see here that our, we're essentially following what we would get with uh, with pretty much blinky mode. If I increase it again, take it up to uh, 10,000 RPM before I start applying boost, uh, now we've actually even lost peak power, and uh, we get kind of a funny-looking uh, power curve here. So don't think uh, increasing the uh, bottom end uh, when you start applying boost is a good idea. Uh, you want to apply your boost starting at a low RPM and get it in before uh, that crossover point that I talked about in the in earlier in the first or second episode uh, in the torque curves. Okay, so that's all I wanted to talk about in um, this episode. 
so just to sort of summarize, so you're, you want to uh, set your can timing as low as you can. Uh, lowest I've gone is 15 degrees. Um, there may be some benefits going down lower than that, but uh, you'd have to do your own testing to find that out. Uh, your total timing, um, from what I know, small tracks, you don't really want to put in turbo. Uh, you just don't have the straightaway length to really take any advantage of that. So you want to keep your uh, motor plus boost timing to less than 60 degrees. Uh, large tracks, um, the same idea, motor plus boost timing, but uh, you may be able to get, get some benefits by adding turbo for the, for the long straight. Uh, you want to apply the boost over low to mid-range RPM and definitely want to monitor your ESC and motor temps very carefully. Uh, you're talking about increasing your current draws significantly when you're playing with boost timing. So you uh, want to make sure you don't uh, cook your ESC or your uh, motor. So if we look at doing a wider boost RPM range, keeping our start RPM low and just applying our uh, boost over a wider RPM range, uh, that starts to take away peak power. But uh, as I said, it could be helpful if you find that uh, when that power peak power comes on, it, uh, it makes things a little harder to control. Uh, higher boost start RPM, um, definitely would not recommend going down that path, but who knows, somebody may find an application for it. Um, last but not least, if you want to get a better understanding about motor timing and how it works and how boost timing and blinky timing and all this sort of stuff um, works together, uh, there is an excellent series of articles on this website here. Uh, if you just Google motor timing theory, it should come up near the top of the page uh, or you can uh, just go to this, uh, this website. Uh, definitely very interesting reading if you want to look more into the uh, technical side. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted for this one.